Who are you? Mac DeMarco. Mac DeMarco, welcome back to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Feels good to be back, baby. And right off the bat, I have a gift for you. Cool. A couple gifts. Here we have something. Merry Christmas, uh, Mr. Lawrence. DeMarco, and also a Yuki. Yuki Yukihiro Takahashi. Oh, Normantic. This one's great. I don't have this one. Yeah, please tell the people about these records and the importance to Mac DeMarco. This guy plays drums in YMO. This guy uh, plays a synth and uh, does a couple vocals. There you go. Great band. Mac DeMarco, you've only put drumsticks up your ass once, right? Only once. That's true, but I put something else up my butt in Vancouver a while ago at Ochi in Chinatown, which was my thumb. Yeah. That's what I wanted to ask you about. We have some documentation from that night by Steve Louie here. A photo is an Emily Carr after party. Could you explain what's going on here, please? Uh, yeah, this is so this is Ochi, I guess. This is here's my friend Victor and uh, yeah, the boys and everybody. I don't really know. I, we got really really drunk before this show, and as you can see right here, I mean, you know, it's just kind of a shock factor style thing. Show was going a little bit weird at this time. We weren't the, the tightest band ever. So, you know, you kind of got to wow the crowd somehow. But as you can see, Victor was just about to really give the finger that extra push. And it was disgusting. It smelled really bad. And I think I, some people were probably offended, but maybe others enjoyed it. I don't know. Now, not only did the finger smell bad, it also tasted bad. You sucked on the thumb, the finger. I actually forgot about that part. But yes, I, I did. Yeah, I did. Poo banging. Yeah, poo banger. Yeah. Did you ever play an art show where you were doused in mushrooms by a model? Doused in mushrooms by a mod. Oh, we didn't play it, but that was the very first time I ever went to New York. Well, that's really crazy. Why didn't, maybe Brandon told you that. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, we went to this show. It was like a photography show, and this girl Mila was like, "Hey, you guys, me and me and Alex, the kid that was playing drums, make a video tape." She's like, "You guys want some chocolate?" And we're like, "Yeah, sure, yeah." And we started eating this chocolate. I'm like, Man, this chocolate is like, what is it like? Really rich or something? It tastes so bad. She's like, ha, ha. I'm like, what's so funny? She's like, it's got mushrooms in it. And I was like 18 at the time. Never had taken magic mushrooms before. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, and in New York with these like fancy art people that I like had, you know, I was very nervous, very scared by the big city, but, and also like really high on, on mushrooms. It was really strange. Mac DeMarco, this is Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, isn't it? This is another shot by Steve Louis. Could you explain what's going on here? The zoo shop. This symbolizes Vancouver, doesn't it? Yes. It, uh, we got uh, Alex from Dirty Beaches here, my friend Cody Hicks. Looks like Joe there. Alex Calder playing with me there. This is Connor Brady's brim here, Ainsley Willow. Man, this is an old photo. And look at me. What happened here, huh? What's going on? The zoo shop, very important. Yeah, zoo shop, yeah. It's a little, well, was it, is it still around, yeah? No, it's no longer there. No way. Oh, well, times change. Record store played shows in the back a lot. Great place, really like that spot. And if you turn the photo over, another photo by Steve Louie. What do we have here? But make out videotape playing at Hoko's in... Yeah, in... Uh, 2009. Yeah, look at that. Nice back there. Ryan Smith there. Sydney Jacobs, Scott Parsons, Evan Brasovsky. Adam Shaw. Lovely, yeah. This was with uh, Apollo Ghosts, I think, this show. I remember that. Also not the tightest show I've ever played, but great time. It's now called Lanaloo's. It's no longer called Hoko's, but it's an important place. I guess what I was trying to say is like Zoo Shop. Those are places that people don't always know about Vancouver, but that really is Vancouver. That's where you came from, isn't it? It is. And actually, the funny thing about this is that Hoko, the man, was my landlord because the water boiler room was right across this wall right here. So there you go. That show was actually reviewed, believe it or not, in Discorder magazine by Sean Nelson. Quote, despite some unfortunate attempts at audience participation, <laughs> Make Out Videotape proved a cool end to a sweltering evening of musical community. Yeah, there you go. At least it gives, gives me something, you know. And if we look way in the back there, we can see John Collins from the New Pornographers, the guy with the beard. You know the New Pornographers of Vancouver? Yeah, there you go. I didn't know at the time, but that's interesting. <laughs> and that was his first date with his girlfriend, Susanna. Yeah, hope it went well. Hope I didn't ruin it for him. Well, also, actually, there's a connection between Makeout Videotape and Mac DeMarco and the New Pornographers. What is it? You want to see it? It's right here. Check out what they have, what the new pornographers have for sale or had a few years ago. Ah, uh, the, the classic rock Coke mirror. Yeah, that's nice. See, this is what I wanted mine to look like, but mine looks more like it's for like a 16-year-old's like locker, like for the inside of her locker or something. So, But that's nice. Look at that. 
I think they actually did it by going to thrift shops and silk screaming them by hand. Yeah, see, they got it. Yeah. See, that, this, I wanted a nice frame. I wanted it to look like, because the Grateful Dead and stuff had those mirrors a long time ago and stuff. So, But this, yeah, they outdid me on this one, I'll tell you. It's nice. Back to Vancouver. I mean, here we are in Vancouver. So much Vancouver. You on the cover of Discorder magazine, CITR's program guy. That's right. Yeah, I got one of these at my mom's house. That's it. That's With AlexCalderEats.com. It is, but there's a trick to this. Actually, this is a cutout of Alex's face. Behind it is Jen Clement of The Courtney's. And if you open it up to that little annotated piece there, what do we see? If you open up your Discorder magazine, CITR's program guide. There you see Jenny. And Mac. Yeah, and a guitar my friend Marcel gave me. So that's not the guitar, is it? No, it's not. No, it's like a crazy metal guitar. It's kind of cool, though. What can you tell the people about Jen? Jen is, um, she used to play drums with me. At the time I met her, she was playing in a band called Puberty from Calgary. Um, now she's got a band called The Courtney's. Dear old buddy of mine. An important band, The Courtney's. Yeah. I haven't even seen one of these in the flesh yet, actually, because I'm on the other side of the country. But, And, you know, crazy thing about this, I ran into, uh, not sure if it was Tegan or Sarah the other day in, in Saskatoon, but it was one, they looked pretty similar. But um, the cousins of Jen, they're cousins with Jen. And I didn't realize that the Courtney's are open for Tegan and Sarah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy stuff right there. That's a big time stuff, I'll tell you. Shout out to the Courtney's and Jen. Yeah, God bless, girls. Have a good time out there. Now, also important is Pop Echo Records. What can you tell the people about Pop Echo Records and Peace, an important band as well? Hey, this is true. This band, um, I lived with Dan and Jeff from Peace when I first moved to Vancouver on Killarney and 41st Ave. Way out there. On tour etiquette, it's best to masturbate into a sock? <laughs> uh... Some may say, I, I don't usually ever use a sock. I just kind of like leave it on the floor of the Taco Bell or whatever. <laughs> What's it like shitting in the shower? Uh, that's, well, yeah, that's a strange one too. Actually, we were talking about Dan and Nigel and, and uh, Jeff, uh, the Peace guys and stuff. When I lived with them, I got real sick and it was like I was having the squirts and I was like really feverish and oh, so terrible. But I went to the shower at one point and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's like shitting anywhere else except you're standing up, so that's kind of where it gets all over your legs and stuff. It w helps if it's liquid, because if it's not, you got to push it down the drain hole, you know what I mean? <laughs> How many times have you shitted in a plastic bag? Because that's important to shit in a plastic bag. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many times. I remember doing it pretty vividly on a... The first tour we went, to, it went on, I think it was in like a Lay's potato chip bag or something like that. I don't know why, I mean, we could have just pulled the car over, but for some reason that tour was just kind of like, and we were late for every show too. It's not like we were in a rush. It was like, we just, I don't know, we're weird young kids on a road trip, so. Mm. But that's not that weird though, because you know, bands and buses, you can't shit on the bus, right? I didn't know that. So you have to shit in a? In a bag. So you were just paving the way for future success, Mac DeMarco. So that means Phoenix is pooping in plastic bags on their tour bus? Totally. <laughs> That's amazing. Mac DeMarco, quote, does my life have any meaning? Am I a flake? Staying up all night, just rapping like? Uh, Drake? Yes! <laughs> whoa, whoa. Sensitive humor? What was that all about? Oh, whoa, that's a deep cut right there. That's sick. Um, my good friend Evan Prasovsky, also an Edmonton boy, He's, he made a couple of the makeup videotape videos. He's made a couple of my new videos for the new stuff. And he's a great rapper. And now he's moved on to great things. He's doing videos for Paul McCartney. He did a Lana Del Rey video. He's a, an amazing director of photography. I'll tell you. Yeah. It's, that's crazy you have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, old Ev. Mac DeMarco, thank you, Calgary. Fast forward. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Calgary. Look at that. Eh? <laughs> This is by my friend Nicole, who played in a band called Puberty with Jen, who we were talking about in the Courtney's. Yeah, so cover story by Josiah Hughes. Josiah, yeah, from the Grown Ups. But thank you, fast forward, because you took this design, didn't you? Yeah, my label loved this, and they use it a lot for all kinds of stuff. So, and it's great, you know. Nick, look at Nicole's uh, drawing. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah. Mac DeMarco in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. We shoot a lot of movies here. Yeah. Your family, though, your grandfather, was he an extra in Scarface? He was. He was, yeah, in the scene where, uh, 
uh, what's the what's the, I'm drawing a the restaurant scene? Yeah, the restaurant scene where you, you know Scarface is freaking out, ah, screaming, swearing, and my grandpa. See, he's like really he was really religious. Never met the guy who's dead before I was born, but my mom said that he was in there and you know looking distressed because he like feels very uncomfortable with uh, foul language. So, but yeah, he's in there. How did he get in? It? How can we spot him? Um, I don't know. I, the best way to spot him is probably to watch a movie with my mom. You can hit her up on uh, at Agnes DeMarco on Facebook. But um, I don't know. I mean, he's got like big old like kind of those uh, uh, sepia tone glasses, nice black hair. But he was living in L.A. and I think uh, while well, he, he was playing sax down there and uh, took up some extra work apparently. So there you go. Mac DeMarco, what's the importance of music waste in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada? Music waste. This, I remember moving to Vancouver and I knew about music waste already and I was like, oh man, it would be pretty cool to play music waste, you know, that'd be pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, we ended up getting a chance to, so I, I, it's just a great fun festival. And, you know, at the time when I was, uh, maybe they still do it this way, but it was like uh, all Vancouver bands and like bands that play like every week, but it was like a festival and for some reason it was like always really special and it was really fun. And they take your photo and here's your photo as taken by Sarah Cordingly from the Music Waste Program Guy. Oh, look at that, I look like my little brother there. That is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and on the back, who do we have? We've got Walter TV, my boys. And I was curious, when did you meet Walter TV? When did you first, like the actual meeting? I met him on a rooftop on Davy Street. My friend Ira was having a party. And I met Pierce and Joe. And uh, I didn't meet Simon until later. But yeah, because we had a show booked together. I think Tristan Orchard had done the show or something. And it was kind of like the interaction was like, hey, man, like uh, we're playing a show together. Like I'm in make a videotape. And they're like, yeah, cool. We're in Walter TV. But then things smoothed over eventually. And I have a gift for you. A Rennie Wilson coaster. This is a Rennie Wilson coaster. <laughs> People that don't know, explain. Rennie Wilson, the subatomics. This is very important to Mac DeMarco. Yeah, well, Rennie was a guy that I met when I was maybe 15 or so, and I was going to shows. At the time, all the kids my age were playing, like, you know, blues rock, Eric Clapton cover bands. But then Rene came around, and he was really into, like, the Gories and, and you know, you know D Detroit, like, uh, you know, garage rock. And they were going nuts. Like, they were, like, you know, these little, I think they were, uh, you know, straight edge at the time. But, like, they would fly around the stage playing these crappy guitars, crappy amps. They were great, though. They were really cool. And uh, I think for me, that was kind of like, hey, I could probably do that, too. So that's Rennie. Now, now he's doing his own thing uh, under this name, Rennie Wilson. Marco, what's the longest crowd surf you've ever done? Like, you've gone over barriers and stuff. You've done some, like, long ones. I mean, like, going over barriers, right? Yeah, yeah. I think um, the longest one, I think, is probably we played a festival called Normal in Monterey, Mexico. And it wasn't even, the, like, I wasn't surfing across the crowd. It was maybe just, like, 10 or 12 kids that were just holding me up. But it was a giant place, like a giant field, and they walked me all the way to the back fence. Then when we got there, I was kind of like, oh, I guess we got to go back now. So we walked all the way back. It was probably like, you know, 10 minutes or something. Yeah. My gay husband. Jason, what's up? Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy, too. Did a lot of sh For us, it was like Jason shows. He's like, Mac, you want to do Glory Days? It's like, man. Like, yes. Yeah. So it was like you're paying your whole rent from one show. That was like, boo. That was crazy, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. The Victory Square Block Party. Yeah, that's I played that once too. That was a big, that was like a monumental thing. Because when I first, I think when I actually first moved here, one of the first things I did, I went to see the evaporators at the Victory Square Block Party. So it was kind of like, this is crazy, man. Then a couple years later, rocking that stage myself. Nice. You know? Do you remember doing a gig at Mime School in LA where you got your Sonic Youth t shirt stolen? Yeah, yeah. At uh, Justin, Justin Graydon's spot. Um, I remember it was really sweaty and we played and then I t wore one of the Walter TV tour merch shirts and then when I went to get the Sonic Youth shirt back, gone. And my friend Scott gave me that shirt for my birthday and I looked on eBay the other day actually at those shirts, those dirty shirts, original tour shirts, they're like 500 bucks on eBay. So somebody either really liked Sonic Youth or knew how much they were worth on the internet, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then you ended up partying really hard at night and people wanted to kill you because you partied too hard. How much is too much partying? Oh, um, maybe, I don't know if they wanted to kill us because of, well, maybe, maybe I could have been, probably made an idiot of myself. It was like our first time in LA. But I remember we were sleeping in our RV because we were touring in that. And this guy came up and tapped on the window and we were, Pierce got up and he was like, hey, what's up? The guy was like, wrong neighborhood, man. Like, you got to move unless you want to die. We were like, okay. 
So we moved and we didn't die. I have another gift for you, Mac DeMarco, right here. It's the wipers, Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Because, you know, in Vancouver, we rep Vancouver a lot, you know, being from Pacific Northwest. We also got a rep, Portland, Oregon. What gives about the wipers? How'd you get into the wipers? Why'd you like the wipers? I think the wipers, how did I get into the wipers? I think my guitar player now, Peter, he showed them to me in Edmonton at some point. Or maybe it was, yeah, but I remember getting really into them when I lived up on Killarney Street. And I would ride my bike around, but I didn't listen to Youth America. Which album was I listening to? Uh, Over the Edge. I would just bl- bust it in my headphones, get on the bike, cruise way north to like where that you know canal is or whatever. But yeah, you know, Rome, Romeo. Like it was a, I loved it, loved it a lot. So I don't know. Ever since then, reminds me of Vancouver, and reminds me that uh, rock and roll is uh, pimp ass. And some more Pimp Ass Greg Sage fun for you. Another gift for you, Mac DeMarco. It's a 7-inch by Beauregard where Greg Sage of the Wipers plays guitar from 1971 and Beauregard's a wrestler. Crazy. So I was thinking you could possibly cover this. It's an amazing song, Testify, proto-punk from 71. <laughs> Look at that. Check out the video on YouTube for Testify. And Greg Sage of the Wipers plays guitar. This is him in 1971 playing guitar for this wrestler, Beauregard. Amazing, amazing. Thank you very much. Mac DeMarco, did you break Mish from White Lung's Orbital Bone wrestling her at Honey Lounge? That, that was my drummer, Joe. I, I remember it very clearly. He was kind of standing out in a corner, and he looked kind of like he was kind of lurched over, like smiling, like, eh, really weird. Next thing I know, jolts across the room. Mish is playing his set, like White Lung's playing, and he, like, picks her up and knocks her into Anne-Marie's drums. And, yeah, she got, like, uh, pretty screwed up from it. Yeah, it was pretty weird. Yeah. And he doesn't remember doing it, and he doesn't remember why he would have done it. So, strange, yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, Mac DeMarco. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? God bless you. Love your mom. Hope you're having a good day. Why should people care about Mac DeMarco? Why should they care? I don't know. You don't have to. But if you feel like it, I'm uh, right here with open arms, baby. All right. Well, thanks much, Mac DeMarco. Keep on rocking in the free world. And do, 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 do. Do, do. Yeah. Yeah. This. Hi. See you soon. Thanks for dropping by.